Welcome to the ChatGPT Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Each episode, we dive into the latest developments in the exciting field of artificial intelligence, exploring its applications and potential impacts on our daily lives. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. If you've been following the podcast for a while, you'll know that over the last six months, I've been working on a stealth AI startup. Of the hundreds of projects I've covered, this is the one that I believe has the greatest potential. So today I'm excited to announce AI Box. AI Box is a no-code AI app building platform paired with the App Store for AI that lets you monetize your AI tools. The platform lets you build apps by linking together AI models like ChatGPT, MidJourney, and Eleven Labs eventually will integrate with software like Gmail, Trello, and Salesforce, so you can use AI to automate every function in your organization. To get notified when we launch and be one of the first to build on the platform, you can join the waitlist at AIbox.ai. The link is in the show notes. We are currently raising a seed round of funding. If you're an investor that is focused on disruptive tech, I'd love to tell you more about the platform. You can reach out to me at jaden at aibox.ai. I'll leave that email in the show notes. In the past, I've talked a lot about the implications of humanoid robots and what that would look like if we are integrating AI into them. So today I want to talk about a really interesting story by a company that has recently integrated not only GPT into a humanoid robot, but also has integrated Stability AI and essentially created the ability for this robot to draw, which is really, really interesting. So... Uh, I guess a basic overview on this is the fact that um, back in 2021, a mecha was essentially an advanced humanoid robot that was developed, and it was given, it has a bunch of different equipment on it, so it has microphones, cameras, facial recognition software, um, and GPT embedded into it. So all of this comes from a company called Engineered Arts, and you may have seen them. I think about nine months ago, they had a YouTube video go viral where essentially they had one of their engineers interviewing this humanoid robot um, and, you know, talking about the applications of humanoid robots and AI and what it can do. Um, And, you know, we've talked a lot about that on the podcast. I think this has some really amazing possibilities um, for, you know, robots to take over things like electrical and plumbing and all sorts of very um, what were previously, you know, blue collar jobs. Um, And of course, I don't say that in a positive way, like, oh, the robots are going to come and take over all our jobs. I'm just saying this, like, this is inevitably going to happen. These AIs and these robots will be trained to do tasks right now. When we see this AI revolution, we primarily are seeing this in a way that, um, you know, we're we're having these robots take a lot of white collar office jobs um, or essentially automate the, the AI can automate a lot of office jobs and administrative tasks within businesses and I think the next step is when these humanoid robots come out the AI will then be able to start automating um, or doing a lot of blue collar tasks now this has pros and cons and you know to to take this from the opposite side because of course it's quite obvious the side of we don't you know plumbers and electricians are being very upset about this if all the robots come and take their jobs Um, but from I'll, I'll take I'll steel man the case for the other side which is that you know I have a family member that is an AC repairman and has a very, very difficult time hiring people that are uh, reliable to help uh, with his business. And so he is, you know, he would love to retire, but he just can't quite do it and he can't find someone to replace him in his business. So he is forced to continue working, um, which is quite difficult. If there was a humanoid robot that he could train that could do all of his tasks for him, I mean, despite the fact that Uh, The people that he works with might think it's weird and all of the other side effects. But like from a practical perspective, this would be a lifesaver for him, right? If he could uh, buy one of these and have this essentially run his business. Maybe he runs the phone calls, manages it, tells it what to do. Um, I could see a a future where this is going to be very useful. And in my opinion, this is like it or hate it. This is an inevitable future um, that will that will arrive. These, These humanoid robots will be able to automate these tasks. So. Beyond all of that background, um, what I want to talk about today is the fact that this new robot, it's called Ameka, um, it was recently upgraded with Stable Diffusion, which is a deep learning model for generating images based on text prompts. 
um, and it now can draw. So they recently did a demo on YouTube uh, where essentially they asked it to draw a cat. And what's interesting is it explains a little bit about how it goes about this process. So um, the robot, which has GPT-3 in it, I really think they should upgrade it to GPT-4 now that the API is in there because we know that GPT-3 is definitely a less advanced model. I actually think this thing could um, reason better, talk better, do a lot of things better, literally just with the upgrade of the software API. So that's gonna, that's kind of cool that their you know their overall product gets significantly better once once OpenAI or anyone else releases a little bit better software that they can just upgrade. But in any case, it explains what it was doing and how it kind of integrates. And it said, I generate my drawing image through the open source uh, neural network project, Stable Diffusion. From there, trajectories of the drawing are available. And when I skeletonize the image and vectorize it, after that, I plan and execute the trajectory to draw the image on my canvas. So essentially, um, the engineer that was with i don't know if i said her because i was uh in any case um there's an engineer there that told the robot what to draw and it drew a cat now i'm i'm not gonna lie this is not an incredible picture of a cat uh it it like it is the right shape roughly of a cat with ears and the eyes which are kind of funny and deformed it, it literally had a dry erase marker and is drawing this on a dry erase board um so it's not very fancy it's Probably something similar to if I gave my four-year-old a dry erase marker and told him to draw a cat. Maybe worse, to be honest. Then the robot did sign its name at the end, which I thought was pretty funny. Now, the engineer that was with the robot, that was with Emeka, uh, told it that uh, when she, when the robot essentially asked, you know, if, if there was uh, how it was or to rate it or whatever... And the researcher said that it looked very... It said it's kind of sketchy... And the robot said, if you don't like my art, you probably just don't understand art, which I thought was pretty funny. I'm not sure if this is some sort of canned or programmed response or if it literally um, is saying that. In any case, it, it's pretty funny. But uh, I do see a future where um, this concept, I think, is really powerful of not just like, you know, we've seen all the automations before where you have like an automated robot that essentially just moves its hand to the perfect place and can color something perfect. Or, you know, we could probably train a robot to be a printer and just do everything exactly perfect but i think this is an interesting point where they're training robots to do this in a different way they're training it the same way humans do it by using cameras um, and spatial recognition software and all sorts of different things that are not necessarily just like a rigid printer per se um, and it's able to go and actually learn how to draw and and draw things and i think integrating with stable diffusion is really interesting because you can imagine Stable Diffusion or a lot of other different image generating software, like if you had something like Midjourney um, integrated into one of these robots and then had it, you know, paint something that it was, you know, generate some sort of beautiful image in Midjourney and then it's trained to paint and it could paint that. Like these robots could create all sorts of really incredible pieces of art, um, really incredible things. So I think this is a really interesting application. Obviously, this goes beyond that, you know, it can draw blueprints and all sorts of different things that it could probably come up with that we can train these AIs to do. But I thought this is a very interesting use case. Um, and a big, it, you know, it seems like a small thing, a lot of haters or a lot of uh, people will be like, Oh, look, you know, it drew a terrible picture of a cat. But, you know, I think it wasn't that long ago when we we're saying, Oh, look, this GPT, you know, had a bunch of grammar errors and like said something fake. And then all of a sudden it gets better and better and better. And all of a sudden we have GPT-4, which, you know, admittedly is not perfect, but is quite complex. I think it's going to be the same thing with art where these robots, you know, the first version is a kind of a gimpy looking cat picture that people are like, oh, look, it's not that good. Haha, ha, it's terrible. It's like, OK, well, what is it going to do in a year? What's it going to do in two years? What's it going to do in three years? At the rate of AI, this thing can paint a masterpiece. Um, honestly, like imagine you have a wall in your house and you could get one of these AI robots hooked up to mid journey to come into your house with a bunch of paintbrushes and go and paint an incredible mural on your wall. Like this is inevitably going to happen. And this is going to be literal paint. In fact, imagine a point when artists use this to paint things for them. I'm not saying this is good or bad. Actually, I mean, obviously it's bad, but like imagine an artist getting a robot to paint something for them and then passing it off as their own work. I mean like, no, no, no this was mine. Like you right now we're talking about, what are we going to do to have like AI detection in text? Like how are we going to text, uh, detect if this is written by AI? Okay, here's a bigger question. How are we going to detect when something was painted by AI, when a creative asset was created? There's so many more um, interesting things. And then like it gets to the point where 
let's say we have like AI electricians in the future or like these humanoid robots that are also have AI into them and they could be trained to be an electrician. Let's say one of those goes into a home, wires something wrong, but the owners weren't there. Um, the owners come back. Let's say there's some sort of liability. The house burns down. Then the electrician says, oh, no, I, I did that myself. It's, you know, registered under I'm bonded and insured. This should go on, off on my insurance. But really, it was like the robot. Like, how do we prove, like, without cameras or a ring camera or something else, like, assuming that's not there, right? Like, how do we prove that it was the human or the person? So I think that this whole AI detection is going to it's going to come in ways that we're not thinking of right now. Right now, we're just thinking of like, how do we detect AI text? Okay, but how do we detect the handiwork of AI or artwork of AI? There's going to be so many different areas that uh, people are going to be looking at and building into in the future. So very interesting space and something I think we definitely need to continue watching. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. We just launched our AI Creators Discord community. If you're looking for a really kind of hands-on and innovative place to talk to other people making amazing things in AI, you need to join this community. Obviously, it's a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share prompts and software and tools that we're using to create really interesting use cases. We'd love to have you join and become part of the community. If you don't use Discord, there's also always the Facebook group. I'll link both of those down in the description. You've been listening to the ChatGPT podcast. Make sure to rate us wherever you listen to your podcasts and have a fantastic week.